Hello everybody and welcome to the serverless workflow hands-on video series. In this series of videos we will take a look at a real-world business problem and see how we can solve it using workflows and orchestration and specifically how we can define these workflows using the serverless workflow language. Just a quick introduction, uh, the serverless workflow is a CNCF sandbox project and you can find all the information about our GitHub website and things like that. Um, also check out the um, links in the video description where I will link uh, good videos about a generic introduction to the serverless workflow project and um, its parts and, and, and everything else. So make sure you check that out um, as well. When dealing with uh, workflows and orchestration to solve business problems, we have to first know what our business problem is. And for this first uh, video in our series, we will take a look at new patient onboarding, for example, at a, a hospital. And uh, our business problem deals with registering new patients, assigning doctors to patients, and also scheduling appointments with doctors. Um, serverless workflow uh, defines a domain-specific workflow language, meaning that the domain that we're um, targeting is workflow orchestration or event-driven um, distributed services. So with that said, let's take a look at our overall architecture of the demo that we're going to uh, work with today. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is in the top, the services that we have available. And these are the services that our workflow uh, has to orchestrate in order to solve our business problem. In this case, we have just three services, the new patient registration service, which deals with uh, taking new patient information and storing it into our system. Then we have a doctor assignment service, which takes this new patient, looks at his or her uh, current medical conditions, and then assigns the most appropriate doctor uh, that we have to this patient. And, and the third system uh, service is an appointment scheduling service, which then takes this new patient and the assigned doctor information and tries to schedule the next available appointment for this patient with this particular doctor. If we look at now at the very bottom of the slide, we have different apps or devices um, which can trigger uh, the, the, the onboarding of user patients. And each one of these, these devices can send an event using the cloud events format uh, to our message broker. So we can take in events uh, from many different apps or devices and push them onto our message broker in this demo where we'll use MQTT and our serverless workflow, which kind of sits in the middle, is going to um, listen to these new patient events. They're going to trigger an instance of our workflow execution and we're going to define together um, the language inside of this uh, serverless workflow on how to orchestrate, uh, how to take in our event, how to listen for our event, and then how to orchestrate the three services that we have in order to perform or solve the business problems, uh, problem of uh, onboarding a new patient into our system. So now let's take a look at actually what we have um, available in our system. Here we have a Swagger UI of the application uh, that I have running. And currently you can see in the Swagger UI, we have three services. Here is our patient service, like we said, um, um, that takes new patient information and stores it. We have a slash doctors. This is the endpoint of our um, doctor service to, to, to assign a doctor uh, given the patient's condition and the appointment service, uh, which then schedules the next appointment. This new patient event service is just there for web clients to basically uh, give it the information and this service is just going to transform that into a cloud event and push it onto our um, message broker as a cloud event. So that's pretty much all we have. Um, now let's take a look at our project. And this is just a web project and you can look at the description below where you can um, clone it from GitHub and run this yourself if you wish. Um, it's just running on Quarkus currently, but you can run this also on Spring Boot or even Micronaut and things like that. So it doesn't really matter. Um, one thing I wanted to show is before you get started with uh, VS Code and serverless workflow, uh, one important part is to click on extensions and find the serverless workflow extension. This is actually a, a extension that we provide as part of, alongside the specification. 
and everything else and 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 the uh, SDKs in, in in different languages. So make sure you get that because it will allow you to do things like code hints, code snippets, and also you will be able to generate um, SVG diagrams to visually uh, see um, your JSON or workflow markups uh, to create a visual uh, representation of those. So I already have this installed, but make sure you, you get it. So now let's go back to our project. And since this is a, a simple Maven project under source main, resources um let's go ahead here and create a new file let's call it onboarding workflow um, and in this case um, we are going to create a json a workflow uh, in, with the json format now the same thing you can do also in yaml it's it's also um the service workflow specification allows you to to define your workflows in both types of formats so let's go ahead and get started um, once you have the VS Code extension for serverless workflow defined, you will get these code hints. So these are top level parameters that we can define for our uh, workflow. And so let's give our workflow a unique identifier. Let's call it onboarding. Let's give it a name. Um, let's call it patient onboarding workflow. And now we can already get started. And, and the first thing we're going to define is our control flow logic, which are um, if, if within serverless workflow, they're a set of states and the transitions between the states. And each state in serverless for workflow uh, can perform one particular uh, part or piece of, of, of the overall workflow control flow logic. So let's go ahead and do that. We, we're going to define our states array, and a states array holds one or more states. So our first state, let's give it a name on, let's say, let's onboard. And each state has a, a type. So we see with serverless workflow language, you have currently nine different types. And the one we're going to use today is called the event state. And this state really does what it what its name is. It deals with waiting for events. And then once these one or more events are received, you can execute one or more actions. And actions meaning, in our case, for our uh, particular solution is invocation of our services. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, once we define a type, uh, you will get um, the particular parameters in this drop down that are specific to this uh, particular state type. So in this case, we want to find um, a parameter called on events, meaning that here we define what events we're going to listen for. So let's define um, our event references, and we will get to that here in a minute after we define our control flow logic. So this just means that the event we're going to uh, listen for is called, let's say, a new patient event. You can specify more events and you can specify the correlation between these two events. Um, and, and if, uh, if they, you know, things like um, um, joins, like if you have one or more event, they have to happen at the same time or, 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 or not in order to trigger the particular actions. But in this case, we have just a single event called a new patient event. So once we this define this event, um, let's define our actions. So in this case, um, actions can be executed either sequentially or in parallel. But for patient onboarding, we have to execute these in sequentially. So because we first have to save a patient before we actually assign a doctor to this patient. And then we have to um, actually schedule the next patient appointment. So in some cases, you might want to execute these actions uh, in parallel, but for our simple demo, uh, we have a sequential execution. And really the only thing we have to do here is define um, a function reference. So this is a service that we want to invoke, we will define later. And we are going to give it the reference name. These are logical names that make sense to us as far as writing the, the, the uh, workflow itself. Let's call it, um store new patient info this is the first um function that we want to invoke and that's it 
Now I'm going to have two more. The second one is going to be assign doctor to patient, meaning here we want to invoke our second service. And the third action is going to be schedule patient appointment. And that's really it. This is a, our control flow logic. The only other thing that we have to do is we have to say which state starts and which state ends the workflow execution. And in this case, since we only have one state, uh, the state both does both things. So in this case, we want to have a start, use the start parameter. Um, and there's different ways in serverless workflow how you can define you want to start your workflow instance. Um, and one of them being, for example, you see here schedule, you can start uh, define uh, scheduled starts of your workflow instances, things like that. But since in our case, we're waiting for the new patient event, uh, we don't have a scheduled start. The same thing really is on the bottom. Let's say we want to have an end definition, uh, meaning once we have received a new patient event, which will trigger a new workflow instance and perform our three actions. We want to end workflow execution. So again, it's the same type of thing, the kind. We have different ways of ending workflows, for example, sending an event uh, or terminating all currently executing states. Um, they might be running in separate threads or something. That is the terminate option. But again, for our demo, we just want um, simple um, the instance to simply be uh, stopped at this point because we have executed, uh, I mean, orchestrated and, and, and onboarded a new patient at this point. All right, so then for control flow logic, this is it. And you can see this is all domain specific. Again, the domain being um, event driven, um, dis orchestration of event di driven distributed services. And we are really expressed our workflow in that domain being events, a new patient event, and invocation of functions. So, so far, all of these names that we have defined are really domain specific. So they can really make sense once you read it, uh, be specific to the domain of the business of the business that you're running with. Now we have to tell runtime information now um, about a little bit, give more information about this event and also about tell the runtime how we can actually find and execute um, the services that we have in our system. So for this, after states, we have two things. Uh, one thing is an event definition. So here is an array where we actually give more information about our events. Now these event definitions are fully reusable. So instead of defining a inline, you can also use a string type and point them to a different file. But for the sake of the demo, we're just going to define an inline. And for this, we're going to, let's create a new event definition, and we're going to give it a name. Now, this name has uh, to reference, be the same as the event reference that we have declared here. So this is our new patient event. And here we use um, the parameters or uh, from the um, cloud event specification. So we can define it um, a type. So for this case, let's call it like new patient event type. And we can also define it a source, which is the source of where um, this particular event comes from. So, or what is producing this particular event. Um, and since we're in our um, demo trying to deal with multiple sources, one of the nice things you can do with the serverless workload uh, specification is uh, to define a wildcard. So what we are going to do is uh, define um, new patient, and I think it's called new patient, and then we're just going to use the plus character. What that means is that we're going to listen for this event uh, from different sources that are pushing this event on our different topics to start with new patient slash. So if it's new patient web UI or new patient, uh, some different client name, we want to listen to all of them in order to be able to create a workflow instance um, from, from these events. And just to show you guys, the um, this is just the, um, 
service that actually gets the new patient information uh, from the web UI. It just em it uses a channel emitter and emits it to our uh, new patient uh, slash from web topic. So that's pretty much it. And just making sure that I have, I, I put the new patient, it's actually it's like <laughs> new patient. All right, so that is pretty much it. With the, all this information, a runtime should be able to know how to um, uh, listen to these events to start workflow instances. The last thing we have to do is we have these three uh, functions defined. So we have to give the runtime a little bit more information um, on how to actually invoke. So for this, we have the functions array, which is the function definitions. So we have the first one, the name has to be the same as the one we have defined in the control flow logic. And with serverless workflow, we deal, of course, with standards. So for events, we said we use the cloud events format for a function or service definition we use the open API specification. So if you look back at our service, we can go to the um, open API endpoint, and here we can see the open API definition of all the services defined or system. Now I have already that in our project under source main resources API, it's called services.json. So this is our open API definition uh, for all the services that we have available. So in order to, to tell our runtime implementations how to actually execute the service, instead of hard coding some custom parameters here or dealing with some custom definition that may not work for everybody, we are based on standards. So serverless workflow really uses the, the open API definition, which is much better suited for defining RESTful service invocation than anything we could possibly do custom within uh, the serverless workflow language. So the operation, uh, what we want to do is we want to put a relative path to our um, open API definition. And if your open API definitions are not local in your projects, you could also reference them via a URI and things like that as well. It doesn't really matter. So for us, it's a relative path to slash uh, API slash services adjacent. This will tell the runtime where to find the open API uh, definition of our services. And then the only other thing we have to do is give a certain unique operation ID. So for the first one, we are going to look at slash patients, and we're going to find the post method, which has the operation ID of add patients. So this is the particular operation of our patient service, um, which will add a new patient to our system. So going back to our workflow, we just, and that's it. And with this, we really told the runtime everything it needs to do in order to invoke this particular service. Now we have two more. The second one, we have the assigned doctor to patient. So let's take a look at our open API definition. So this is the doctor service. And this is the post method, which takes in a patient and assigns a doctor to it. And operation ID is assigned doctor. So let's paste that here. And then we have our third service that we want to invoke. So let's define it too. And this one is scheduled patient appointments. And in our OpenAI definition, this is the slash appointments uh, service that um, is exposed under slash, slash appointments. And he has also a post method that takes in a patient and a doctor and schedule the next appointment. So it's operation or unique ID is schedule appointment, which we can do here. And that's really our workflow. There is, we have defined the control flow logic, uh, which uh, defines the events or the event in this case, which we are going to going to trigger workflow execution. And we have defined our actions or the sequential actions or invocation of our services uh, that we want to invoke to onboard a new patient. So <laughs> this is basically it. So now what we can do is we can save this file and let's take a look at if we can visualize this workflow. Let's see if this will work, yeah. So 
the serverless workload VS Code extension is allow you to go from your JSON or YAML formats to a visual representation. So this really just shows us that we have one single state. Um, the border color here you can see in the legend particularly that is a type of event but it tells you also here and it also tells us that this particular state uh, waits for a single event called new patient event which we also define here so that's a nice way of, of visualizing our work and seeing if this really also makes sense so that's pretty much it um, now that we have saved this workflow uh, let's go ahead and restart our application and I have it running here so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it started and let's take a look if it is available so this should just take a second all right so that's it now if we look at our swagger UI we will see uh, that we have an additional service called slash onboarding uh, or onboarding service and one cool thing about workflows and workflow orchestration is that when we deploy them they can be exposed to services themselves so really the same way we can define restful endpoints or endpoints of any of our services workflows are the same thing and slash onboarding if you can see in our workflow is the unique id of our workflow so workflows this particular workflow we could also trigger it via uh, its exposed rest endpoint however since our workflow is actually listening to an event uh, we actually have to send a cloud event uh, to our our MQTT um, message broker in order to trigger new workflow instances so for this let's take a look at our UI of the project and here we see a um, simple web UI. Uh, let's say this is an application or a web page that uh, workers at a hospital would enter in new patient information as they come in uh, in order to start uh, onboarding this patient. So let's have a quick look. Uh, let's say we have a guy named John, and he unfortunately has breathing problems. Now, again, when we uh, click here on send onboarding event this information is going to be converted to cloud events format and the event is going to be sent to our um, MQTT topic so when I click on that we see what happened our workflow instance was triggered and here we see the uh, information that we received uh, after our uh, workflow orchestration we have the name and the condition which is really the the call to our first uh, service, the the uh, patient service, the store this uh, uh, new patient to our system. Then our second service, which is the uh, assign the doctor of this patient, um, assign some Doctor Johnson uh, to our patient, given that he has uh, this particular condition, and he's a pulmonologist, so that is the best doctor possible for the type of condition that. John in this case has and after that we have called our third um, service during our workflow orchestration which assigned the next appointment um, available for this patient and this particular doctor so that's really one way of um, of, uh, of uh, triggering our workflow and starting our workflow execution using a web UI but let's also now take a look at uh, maybe we have some sort of devices or, or the workers at the hospital have specific device um, to enter in this new patient information. So it might not be a web UI, it might be something completely different. So in this case, what we're going to do here is send, um, since I'm using, oops, okay, since I'm using uh, Mosquito as, 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 as the bro MQT broker, uh, in this case, we're going to simulate here or actually send uh, a new patient directly into the topic. In this case, the topic is new patient from client. Uh, this is going to be converted into cloud event and is going to also trigger uh, a workflow instance. In this case, we have a patient named new patient from client and his condition is irregular heartbeat. So let's see if we send this particular um, patient information directly what we should do this should have started a workflow instance and if we refresh this page 
we see that um, in the results we have this new patient from client so we have started our new uh, workflow orchestration instance here is their condition um, irregular heartbeat and he was just assigned to uh, in this case a general um, physician and uh, their workflow I mean the, the workflow um, executed the scheduling service also which uh, has created their um, next appointment so that's it uh, for the first demo um, and I'll just end it like this for more information, please visit Serverless Workflow IO and please comment. Put some comments in there, your thoughts, your, what you thought about this video, and uh, what do you think we can do to improve uh, the next hands on videos in the future? Thanks a lot.